In this part we'll see what changes we need to make to rotate objects like disks or wheels. So let's take a look. Alright, so let's do one final tweak to our setup so we can not only rotate uh, spherical objects but also disks or wheels. So let's build another test geometry over here and quickly create a proxy for our disks or wheels. So keep in mind the radius always needs to be 1 because we'll use the p-scale for that. And for our wheel the orientation should be along the z-axis to be properly instanced by our copy to points down here. So let's set the orientation to the z-axis as well. Let's add a extrude. Extrude a little bit. And we want to reverse that. So let's grab a reverse and disable the front but enable the back. And let's add a poly cap. Set it to triangle fan and enable the patch group. Let's do another extrude after that. And on here Let's just extrude the patch group in the negative direction. So on our outer extrude, let's do maybe 0.4. And down here, let's do negative 0.3 for now. Let's also add a marker on the outer rim so we can kind of see if it's rotating. For that, we'll increase our columns on the initial tube. Let's also increase the divisions so we have some primitives to color which we'll actually do now before we grab our color sub. So let's grab a color sub and set the color on the front to green. Let's set the class to a primitive and on the back let's set our color to red also on the primitives now that we have the disks built let's take a look at what changes we need to make to our setup let's switch back to our curves on the fast input so we don't get 2000 wheels let's maybe add another switch for our incoming geometry so we can pick between the spheres or disks. Let's set it to our disks for now. Check the couple of points. That's working. Let's preview the surface as well and our animation path all right, so if we look at this for a moment, we do have a problem with our random orientation, right? So we don't want the random orientation. We don't want a consistent orientation. So there's a third case now where we just want to get the orientation from our animation path up here. Let's reorder these. So we have our animation path on our first input now. Let's see when we want to do it before we extract our points down here. So let's move all that up and add a polyframe to our curve to generate our normal and up vector. Let's quickly take a look how to orient our wheels. So the axis of the wheel is pointing in the z direction so that should be our normal and the up vector that drives the rotation should be the green one so let's take a look at our curves and enable our visualizers so what we do want now is the normal the blue vector to be pointing outwards of the curve and what's blue at the moment here that should be our up vector 
So let's call that up. And our normal should not be the tangent of the curve, but the cross product of the tangent and our up vector, which is the by tangent here. All right, so now we do have the axis of our wheel pointing outwards of our animation path. And our up vector that's determining the rotation is perpendicular to the normal. So let's check if everything's working after we extract our points. So the blue vectors keep facing outwards, which is exactly what we want. So let's take a look at what our wheels are doing at the moment. Let's go back, reset the solver. So the orientation is looking good on the first frame. Let's hit play. But then after it's kind of wobbly. So if we jump inside our solver, we do update our up vector we update our normal, but keep in mind, we do want to keep the incoming normal of our polyframe up here. So what we don't want is to update our normals. So let's do a copy of our attribute wrangle and let's add another switch. So we do have two situations now one where we don't want to update our normal, which is the first one. Let's take a look, reset, go back, hit play again. So our green up vectors are rotating, but the blue vectors, our normals, are kind of feeding through from our polyframe up there. So let's take a look at our wheels and they are exactly doing what they should be doing. So let's quickly add a parameter on our solver. Let's grab a separator and an integer. And let's name that integer full rotation. And the range should be from one to zero. Hit apply and accept. Let's copy the channel, dive in and on our switch paste relative reference. So let's jump back out. So if the full rotation is on, let's reset. We do get the wobbly wheels. And if we set it to zero, we do get our kind of a local rotation where our wheels are following our animation curve. So let's check with our spheres. In this case, with the full rotation set to off. So in this case, they're kind of orienting along the path. And if we set the full rotation to one, they kind of roll on the surface as they would be if they were getting pushed around. All right. So at the end of this series, we do have a pretty flexible setup that can rotate spherical objects that can kind of rotate disks or wheels, and that can kind of switch between a hand animated path or points coming from a simulation. Plus we can switch between a partial and a full rotation. All right, that's it for this series on rolling objects. I hope you had some fun and learned something from building the setup. I'm very curious to see what else you'll be using the setup for, if it's something cool let me know. Um, in the meantime, take care and see you soon.